Isn't it frustrating when the products around us don't work properly or in the way in which they were intended? Self-service checkouts, packaging that's impossible to open, autocorrect learning our typing mistakes. I mean, it was just the other day that my sister and I were laughing because her phone had learned to autocorrect my name from Jess to Jesus. <laughs> It was a frustration for these issues and a passion for creating better everyday products that led me to pursue a career in product design. So I went off to university to study design. And while I was there, I had the opportunity to work with an inspiring team of occupational therapists at the Evelina Children's Hospital in London. While I was there, I designed a therapeutic gardening product for children living with cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a motor neurological condition caused by a brain injury around birth and causes problems with muscle strength, coordination, and dexterity. While I was at Evelina, I was able to observe children's therapy routines and understand firsthand the challenges that they face. My passion for design really ignited when I realized that there was a rich opportunity to bridge the gap between these insights of children living with health conditions and effective design solutions. Following university, I joined local Bath-based charity, Designability. Designability designed products around healthcare and for people living with challenging health conditions. I've been there for just over two years now and design products for people with um, disabilities and health conditions. I work as an industrial designer and researcher. Essentially, my job is to translate the insights of people living with disabilities into effective design solutions. Last year, we worked on a project called Design Together Live Better. This project began as a series of workshops where we engaged with people living with various health conditions their carers and health professionals to understand firsthand the challenges that they face, as well as any opportunities or ideas they had for developing new products to support their everyday life. We then had funding to de develop a few of these concepts to a prototype level. The first concept we designed was, in ins was inspired by Jane, who came along to our first workshop. She had had a stroke the year previously and this had caused a weakness down one side of her body. One of her biggest challenges was putting her two young children in their car seats and doing up their seat belts independently. We went away and designed a concept by looking at various mechanisms through prototyping. We successfully came up with a system that would allow Jane to fasten and unfasten the seat belt with the use of just one hand. And what's really lovely about this concept is that it demonstrates the power of inclusive design, where in designing for extreme users, you often end up making products more accessible and easy to use for everyone. Our next concept was inspired by Mike and Matt here. Mike and Matt are good friends, and this is them traveling to the World Cup final in Germany a few years ago. They're big football fans, so they're always traveling around to football games together. Living with cerebral palsy, like Benjamin, who introduced me, means that Matt finds everyday tasks such as going to the toilet independently really difficult, and it's often a task his friend Mike has to support him with. Have you ever taken the time to imagine how difficult it is for someone in a wheelchair to use a portaloo, for example, let alone with the added challenge of having a friend in there with you? We saw the value in being able to design a product to support Matt in being able to go to the toilet independently, and so we designed Pura. Pura is a portable bidet. Matt would be able to go to the toilet, press the button on the front, and the bidet at the back of the device would wash him. Not only would this support his independence, but it could have a profound impact on the self-esteem and dignity of other people living with disabilities. Another area which designability specializes in is early years powered mobility. This is our WYSIBUG, which is a powered wheelchair that we provide for free under a loan scheme. The health service provide little funding for this age range, an age at which it is so important to be active and mobile and learning through play. 
With the support of engineers and therapists, we developed the WYSIBUG with the user in mind. The product doesn't look like a medical device. It has a personality, and it's playful and fun. I recently went to visit a WYSIBUG family to understand firsthand the impact of WYSIBUG, as well as the difference it makes to the lives of children. This is Sarah and her son, George. George lives with an undiagnosed condition, meaning he is unable to walk, he, has, he is unable to talk, and has real difficulty in controlling his movement. Sarah said that before using WYSIBUG, George was only able to shuffle on his back and roll over in order to move. After just a week in WYSIBUG, Sarah sent us this video of George with his WYSIBUG, which he had fondly named Ruby. As you can see, <laughs> thank you. As you can see, George has found a new lease of life. He is able to explore independent movement. He is learning about cause and effect. He chooses where he goes. When his friends are out exploring on their bikes and scooters, George is in among them playing in his WYSIBUG. His confidence is growing, and he is empowered by the newfound independence and inclusion that WYSIBUG has provided. And perhaps most importantly, you can see the happiness that it brings to him and his family. I would like to conclude my talk by offering you some advice based on some of the knowledge I've taken on in my years as a product designer. My first point is that you all have the ability to be creative, meaning you can all be problem solvers. By working collaboratively and in a multidisciplinary team, you can seek to find new solutions to everyday problems, as well as innovating all around you. My second point is, that you should never be afraid to make mistakes or fail in life. Often, by disproving something, we end up proving it. Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways in which it won't work. And I implore you to think in the same way. My final point, and quite a personal one, is that creativity needs flexibility. And I'd like to illustrate my point in more detail. This is my family. <laughs> this is my dad with perhaps too many daughters. <laughs> a bit like a modern day Jane Austen novel. <laughs> One of my biggest inspirations in life is my younger sister, Lauren, who's on the left there. Lauren was born 12 weeks premature, which means that she lives with cerebral palsy. She also has learning problems such as dyslexia, which means she is unable to learn in the same way that most of us can. But these problems don't define her. What defines her is her ability to adapt and thrive whilst living with these conditions. And this is a video I recently took of her. Creativity isn't as simple as one size fits all. Lauren's skills have no limits. Playing by ear and using her skills for seeing patterns, she is able to play complex and advanced pieces without the ability to read music. Creativity isn't as simple as one size fits all, you see. That's why you all have the ability to problem solve whatever you pursue in life. 
Never set boundaries on your creativity. Take the time to listen and always seek to make the world a more inclusive and accessible place. Thank you. Thank you.